Good afternoon from the holy city of Jerusalem. Today I'll be taking you on the Ramparts Walk, which is a walk along the top of the walls of about 75% of the old city, from the Muslim quarter, to the Christian quarter, into the Armenian quarter, and concluding in the Jewish quarter. And this is the Lion's Gate. This is the only open gate in the old city's eastern wall. And its name comes from the pairs of carved lions flanking the gate. Up the road from this gate is the Via Dolorosa, Jesus' Way of Sorrows, along which numerous Christian pilgrims walk. This is the Dome of the Rock on the right, and the Mount of Olives on the left. Jewish tradition associates the Mount of Olives with the end of days and the resurrection of the dead. In the Christian tradition, the Mount is famed as the backdrop for the events of the last week of Jesus' life. According to Muslim tradition, in the end of days, a bridge will stretch between the Mount of Olives and the Dome of the Rock, and the resurrected will walk across it to eternal life. The Jewish cemetery in the Mount of Olives is the most ancient and important Jewish burial ground in the entire world. Right here we're above Damascus Gate. Down here at the foot of the gate are remains of a gate and plaza dating from the Roman period. Here above Damascus Gate we have the lookout of the three religions. So right here we have the Dome of the Rock, the third holiest site in the Islamic faith, which is located on the original site of the Jewish temple and the still existing Western Wall, which are the holiest sites in the Jewish faith. Over here you can see the dome of the Urva Synagogue in the Jewish quarter. And here are the two domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which according to the Christian faith is where Jesus was crucified and resurrected. stunning view of the walls of Jerusalem stretching to the south. Right here we're in the Christian quarter. This is the flag of the Vatican. Belongs to the Catholic Patriarch in Jerusalem.
So the walls of Jerusalem include 35 watchtowers, one half of which were never completed. The towers protruding outward from the wall provided defenders in the wall with a wide field of sight and fire. Each tower is two or three stories high. The ground floor served as stables and storerooms, the middle stories as soldiers' living quarters, and the upper stories served as guard rooms. So this is Jaffa Gate. This is part of the wall from the 16th century. It's named after the city of Jaffa to the west, the destination of the road that begins here. In 1898, a breach was opened in the wall near the gate, and the moat at its foot was also filled with earth to allow the grand entry to the city of the German Emperor Wilhelm II and his wife Augusta Victoria and their entourage. And this is the Tower of David. This is a fortress at least as far back as the early Islamic period and up into the 20th century. Here we're on the roof of the Kishel. Excavations here unearthed remains of Jerusalem's first temple period wall. The Hasmonean first wall, the foundations of King Herod's palace, and medieval remains. So following the Hasmonean period and the client state of Herod and his sons, Jerusalem was a Jewish city under Roman rule. In 66 AD, the Jewish people rebelled, taking control of the catapults the Romans had positioned in the city and using them against the Roman legions. When the Roman army laid siege to the city, small Jewish forces raided supply convoys and siege machinery. The tensions among Jewish factions in the city and the military superiority of the Roman army ultimately led to the destruction of the city. All right, so here we are in the Armenian quarter the Armenians were the first nation to accept Christianity in the early 4th century AD, and they had been living in Jerusalem since the Byzantine period. The Armenian quarter, the smallest of the old city's four quarters, is unique in the world because it's an active monastery that is home to a secular population. In the heart of the quarter, you see the dome of the St. James Cathedral, the traditional burial place of James the Less, Jesus' brother, and of the head of the apostle, James the Great. All right, looking here outside of the wall is the Valley of Hinnom in Sultan's Pool, first built in the Second Temple period and now used for performances. The hill across the valley here is part of the National Watershed and the Way of the Patriarchs. So outside of the wall here, the southern wall, are a few Christian and Muslim cemeteries. 
This is the Armenian cemetery. Next to it is the impressive German Catholic Dormition Church. Its name comes from the Latin word dormitio, which means sleeping. The church, which was inaugurated in 1910, was built on land purchased following the German Emperor Wilhelm II's visit to Jerusalem, and it marks the site of where Mary, the mother of Jesus, passed away. Her tomb is in the Kidron Valley. All right, this is the Zion Gate. It's known in Arabic as the Gate of King David because the path that leads here leads to the site of King David's tomb according to Jewish, Christian, and Muslim tradition. All right, now we're here in the Jewish Quarter. The Jewish Quarter has been here for the past 600 years, but before that it was on Mount Zion near King David's tomb. This is the white dome of the Urba Synagogue, rebuilt in the early 2000s. Alright, so let's take a peek outside of the walls here of the Jewish Quarter. Here we can see this deep valley and the hill of the city of David. So the city of Jerusalem was established near a spring here as early as the Middle Bronze Age about 3,800 years ago. So this is where the city of King David stood. From the 10th to the 6th century BC, Jerusalem, which was the capital of the kingdom of Judah, contended with the armies of the neighboring nations. The kingdom's soldiers defended the city walls, prepared to strike with bows and slingshots or throw torches and large rocks over the wall. The city rulers were usually able to prevent siege by meeting the enemy outside the walls, but the city also withstood a siege by the Assyrian army. The city walls were not breached until 586 BC by the soldiers of the Babylonian Empire, who were the ones who destroyed the first temple of Jerusalem. Our journey along the walls of Jerusalem ends here at this spectacular view. Here on the left, from the south, we can see once again the Dome of the Rock, and beneath the Dome of the Rock is the western wall there, the holiest site in all of Judaism. So the western wall is the retaining wall for where the original Jewish temples used to be. It's now known in Arabic as Al Haram as Sharif. And off to the right here, that's the Grey Dome of Al-Aqsa Mosque, which commemorates the story of Muhammad's nighttime journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, according to Muslim tradition. So thank you for joining me on my journey along the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. So, from the holy city, Salaam Alaikum, Shalom and peace be with you.